Hi everyone, well, my name is Brian Yakovitz and welcome to the Mead Mashers Guild. This week we'll be talking about the different types of mead there are, as well as a little bit of the history on it. So, stay tuned. It has been called the world's oldest drink, yet few people have actually ever really heard about it. Of course, I'm talking about mead. But there's no need to worry if you're one of those people that haven't heard of it, because I'm here to help you out. So. Mead requires three basic ingredients, honey, water, and yeast to make a traditional mead. As, a, as we'll look in the others, we'll discuss the uh, other ingredients or so that are needed for the other ones. But first of all, from birds and bees, we have a traditional style mead, which is just that. Three ingredients, honey, water, and yeast. Now, this has been drank, like I said, from ancient China to modern day here for thousands of years from the ancient Chinese, Vikings, Romans, Gauls, Saxons. Ethiopia, and even has some biblical references as well. But as we're going along, as time went on, different types of mead started to merge through different cultures through different ingredients. So going from the first mead, again, basic mead, to Fiment. This is a Fiment by Fallen Timber from Water Valley in Alberta. Now Fiment is basically mead made with grapes. Now it could be any type of grape, whether it's a uh, wine grape or a non-wine grape. So Fiment essentially has the entire variety of wine. So anything that can be a wine or a wine blend of grapes can be actually made into a Fiment. So mead does have that variety to it. So next after that we do have Braggot. This is a Braggot by Tamarack Jacks from Caroline, Alberta. And what it is is Braggot is essentially like a beer mead. So what you would do is you would essentially take a hop or a malt, mix it with mead, and then you have a braggot. So now think of any type of beer you have, whether it's a IPA, a stout, pale ale, or anything like that. Any type of uh, hop, malt, or mix that could be made into a beer can be made into a mead. So simply from these two alone, mead actually has a wider variety to it than beer and wine combined. So essentially there is something for everyone in mead just depends on what you're looking for, whether it's dry, sweet, semi-sweet, like more of like a dessert wine, just depends on your individual taste. So after Braggot, next we have Maxwell Spiced Mead, this is from Australia. Spiced Mead, also known as Methaglen, it's an old Welsh word for medicine. So everybody's heard the term, a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. Well, this was essentially to the next step, but with mead. So when herbs and spices that were believed to have medicinal properties were too bitter to take. They would mix it in, or st uh, steep it in their mead essentially. And then from there would drink it as a much easier way to take it. Spiced mead also can be done mulled. Mulled mead essentially means that it is heated up or warmed, kind of like a hot toddy idea. You can either take a basic, uh, your traditional mead or a spiced mead, heat it up in a pot, mix in some spices and some honey, and take it and it's really good to have on a, one of those bitter cold uh, cold days as we're having in Canada right now. So next after the uh, methaglin we have melomel. Now melomel essentially means that mead made with fruit and this can be any type of fruit except for obviously the grapes because we discussed that's five made with grapes. So melomel this is the cherry mia moor by Chinook uh, south of Okotoks in Alberta. And there's been, I've seen cherry, I've seen Saskatoon, I've seen, there's a pineapple one I've seen from Hawaii, um, strawberry, all sorts of other meads that I've seen. And essentially any one of them or any pairing or any combination of fruit that's made into a mead is a mellow mel. So the type of fruit you like, a little bit of honey, a little bit of fermentation, you have something unique right there as well. And lastly on the display that we have here today is the apple from Grey Owl Meadery, which is by Alder Flats, Alberta. Now, I know I said that any fruit is a melomel, but again, like an exception to grapes for fiment, mead that is made with apples is actually called a sizer. Now, sizer does sound a lot like cider. The only difference essentially is the honey that's put into it, whereas cider is just, a, just basically yeast, Apple juice, let it ferment, you got hard apple cider. Uh, sizer takes it to the next step because you're adding apple juice, honey with your yeast 
and then you're going. Sometimes spices like clove or cinnamon are added as well to give a little bit of a different, different flavor profile, but that's what you essentially get when you have that is a sizer. Another one that's commonly like spice meat heated up as well, like a hot apple sizer to uh, like mold. So that's another way you would have it. A uh, few other meat styles we don't have here is a rotamel. Rotamel is meat that is made with roses. So again, a lot of very flowery, rosy essences that you would kind of get from the oils of the flower. There is also capsomel. Capsomel is a mead that's made with chilies. So if you've ever had like a chili tequila or something, if you've ever been to Mexico or a place like that or a chili alcohol, kind of like that. So, but then you get the spice of the chilies and you get the sweetness of the honey and kind of mix it with a sweet and spicy, um, spicy profile as well. And then you can mix it with whatever else you feel. Um, there's boche as well. Boche basically means that the honey, before it is added, um, added with other ingredients to be fermented, um, boche is when they take and either caramelize or so slightly burn the honey. And then when you, at least I find when I've done tastings of boches, they give off a very, um, what is it? Creme, creme brulee sort of uh, sort of taste. It's got that sweet with that crispiness and that creaminess to it from the toasted honey. Another very unique wine. Unfortunately, I don't have one here right now. Now a little more, uh, there's even tons of more kind of behind this, but unfortunately we wouldn't have the time to go over every type of mead, but these were basically the most common ones you will find. Um, price point on most of these, I find... Uh, for everything except for the braggot, most meat I find is between the $20 to $30 range, so it's not overly priced, kind of about your average bottle of wine. Um, as for the braggot, you usually find them average beer price, five, five, six dollars, depending on where you are. This is all Canadian pricing. Um, as for a little bit of more history on mead, we do have the um, again, Romans would drink it, they would uh Enjoyed it for a while until basically uh, grapes became much more prevalent in their agricultural practices. So wine was cheaper to drink than mead because you had to wait on honey. So honey was more in the colonies through Britain and uh, other parts of Europe. Um, Vikings as well. Vikings are actually responsible for the term uh, honeymoon, which everyone has pretty much heard of honeymoon after taking a, having a wedding. But what they would do is they would drink mead after the wedding for days to weeks on end, usually under the moon, which is how you the term honeymoon. So there's a brief introduction of the more common types of mead. There are far many other ones that we'll hopefully get to one day. So following from now on, we'll be doing our Mead Monday episodes where we'll be going through and doing an individual mead tasting every week on Monday. So if you like the video, if you're looking forward to seeing our future content, don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment below asking, telling us what is your favorite type of mead? What was your first experience with mead? So until then, next Monday, see you later.